Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Illustrator tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. You saw the title up there, right? We're going to take a look at creating this honeycomb effect. It's over here on my screen, but I'll put it up over the screen right here as well while I'm talking. We're going to talk about how to create this in Adobe Illustrator. And if you enjoy this video, not only should you hit the little thumbs up button, but you should also make sure you subscribe to this channel so you never miss another Illustrator tutorial in the future. Let's jump into this video and take a look at what we're taking a look at and talk about how we can create this. So this is what we're going to make. We're going to make this and the sky's kind of the limit. You can do whatever colors or number of cells or whatever you want with it. The technique remains the same. We go file new and from this uh, little window here, I'm going to go with a 2560 by 1440 document. I'm going to go ahead and, well, you know what? I'll give the document a name. Let's call this uh, honeycomb. I'm going to just type rect onto the end just to let myself know this is the one that I'm recording with. And here we go with our new document. Great. I'm going to double click here on my appearance panel to collapse it. And I'm going to select my little flyout menu up here on the top of my layers panel and choose panel options. And I pretty much always do this here. I'm going to choose to set the row size to other and maybe make this like 80 pixels. That's going to make it, you know, nice and big so we can see what's going on. We're going to go ahead here and we'll name this layer BG for background, you know, that kind of thing. And up here, I'm going to choose the rectangle tool. Now I'm going to click a single time with the rectangle tool. We're going to make it the size of the document. So 2560, well, 2560 by 1440. We're going to hit OK and you're going to see it's going to drop this rectangle out here. A couple things. We're going to align this to both the horizontal and vertical centers of our document. And I'm also over here going to select to my stroke and hit this little red slash just to get rid of the stroke. And then here with the fill, I'm going to double click it and we're going to give this a specific fill color. I'm going to go with FFDF uh, 5A. And I just had a glance there at my notes to remember the correct color. FFDF 5A is what we're going with here for the background. And we can lock the background uh, layer at this point just so we don't move it and shift it and mess it up at all. I'm going to go ahead and choose to create a new layer right down here at the bottom of my layers panel. And we want to go ahead now and grab the polygon tool. So that's right here underneath the rectangle tool. You can just right click on the rectangle tool. The pop out menu will appear. The polygon tool and just click and drag out a polygon. Hold down the shift key. It's going to give us the perfect orientation for a little honeycomb. And then, you know, whatever size you think fits your, you know, whatever you're thinking of. I'm just going to go with something right about there. Uh, the width of mine is about two, 250 wide by, you know, about 215 high. Uh, something round about there should be great. Uh, it's going to work with what I'm working with at least. Now, I'm going to change the color of this just so I can see what I'm doing here and make sure that I'm not messing anything up. Uh, what I want to do is come right up over here and just set this to a color that contrasts against this background. So something like a dark green is probably fine. Maybe we'll go with a blue just so it really pops out for us. Now, here's a really cool little trick. We need to create a whole series of honeycombs, but we need them to be exactly aligned one with another and kind of snap together. Now, under view, we have smart guides to turn on, which helps a lot with snapping and alignment and things like that, but it's not really gonna help us in this case. We need something called snap to point. Now, in order to use snap to point super duper effectively, well, let's explore it. Number one, we're gonna shut off snap, uh, smart guides just so we don't have all kinds of little overlays and stuff popping up, and you all know how much I love my smart guides, uh, but we're gonna just roll with snap to point. So the thought is here, we can begin dragging out some hexagons and create a whole series of hexagonal shapes. So if I hold down my alter option key and just drag out a copy, there we go. And then I would click and drag this close to my hexagon, but it's obviously not snapping to that hexagon. Now, snap to point should make our anchor point snap together, but it's not. There's a couple things we wanna do. Number one, we wanna hide the bounding box because we want to actually be able to grab this shape and work with it without our bounding box. See, I can just select the actual anchor point there and click and drag with the anchor point. And now watch this. When I get close to the other shape, boom, clicks right to it. Drag on another copy. I can take this by the anchor point and I can click it right into shape there. And now, whoop, don't worry about that. We don't need the, the scissors tool. Uh, we can go through and just continue dragging out copies of this hexagonal shape to quickly build out a whole series of hexagonal shapes to create our sort of honeycomb grid. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. All right, so now you can see I've got this whole series of grids laid out. Maybe it's not quite as clear as it should be because I'm going to select them all and I'm going to get rid of the fill over here by just hitting little swappy arrows. That's going to swap my fill and stroke. And now you can see I've got this nice hexagonal layout, right? Beginning of our little beehive, if you will. And one of the cool things to do, we'll just drag this to the center of our document. You can go through at this point and begin sort of the customization. So I'm going to maybe select that hexagon and get rid of it. I'm just looking to add some interest, make it look even more random. Maybe get rid of that hexagon. Uh, 
I, don't get, I think I need to get rid of one of these. Nah, maybe not. All right, that's probably a good shape to begin working with. Something like that will work for us. And by the way, if you realize, you know what? I actually want one in here. I don't know. Is it the one I just deleted? It is the one I deleted. Uh, I do want one in there. But let's say I want an additional one somewhere else. Um, just to reemphasize the point, you really want to make sure you select one of the corner points, right? So I'm actually selecting that corner anchor point. And when I do that, then my shape will snap beautifully into place. All right, but you can see here, I'm trying to butt the shape using the top of the shape. I don't have an anchor point up there selected, so I'm not getting a snap. If I select one of those anchor points, it will snap right into place just like it's supposed to. All right, so we have our initial hex grid here. I'm gonna just highlight this entire thing, and we want to go ahead and make some changes. Number one, we'll go here to stroke, and we're gonna set the weight of the stroke to 25 points. You can see immediately we get this nice, huge, thick grid. It looks good. And we wanna change the stroke color here. I'm gonna double click on the stroke color, and I'm gonna set this to the color uh, FE double F D9. So this is kind of like a nice, light, creamy yellow color, just like that. It looks beautiful, right? I'm gonna Group these together using the hotkey Command or Control G. If I open up that layer in my layers panel, I can see I've got just a single group, and inside of that group, I have all my polygons, right? So we've got our single group. I'm gonna name this layer. In fact, I'm gonna name it Honeycomb. Whoops, something like that. So there we go. I have this group. I wanna duplicate this group. So we're gonna go object, I'm sorry, not object, edit, copy, and then we wanna paste it exactly in place. I'm just gonna choose edit, paste, in back. That's gonna paste it exactly in place and place this layer behind in our layer stack. See there, that's the, the selected layer the one we just pasted and it is behind our initial honeycomb shape. Now what I'm going to do is just shift this along the X and the Y. Uh, so I'm going to use my arrow keys, holding the shift key and use my left arrow key and nudge it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe something like that. And then down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll go ten in each direction. That looks good. Now I want to change the color of the stroke. So I'm going to double click on my stroke over here at the bottom of my tool panel and I'm going to set this color to B28 E32. And this is just a much darker, you can see, it's still essentially an orangey yellow color, but it's just darker, got a little less saturation, hit OK. And this is going to sort of be the back of our honeycomb. Now, how are we going to make all of this work for us? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use the blend tool. Up here under object, we have this option called blend. We want to come in here and set some stuff up. So just choose blend options. And we're going to, well, first of all, you're probably going to see this as your initial uh, default options. We want to change spacing to specified steps and something like five, 600 is going to work great. In fact. I'll change mine to 500 just to make a point. I'm gonna hit okay. Now what I wanna do is select both my both of my honeycomb grid groups. I got both of them selected. And we'll go object, blend, make. When I do this, give Illustrator a second, it's working with a lot of paths here. It's going to create this little sort of honeycomb grid action for us, which looks super cool. It's grouped everything together. So we got everything grouped up into one group so I can select this entire grid and just drag it wherever I want and Illustrator will move it. It'll do take a second to re-render it, but that's just what it is. We got a lot of paths moving around here. And what I need to do now is we want to sort of outline the face of the honeycomb just to give it a little bit of an edge so you can see the edges of each grid piece. So we're going to access this, but I'm going to collapse the stroke panel a little bit here. Uh, here, I've got my blend. I'm going to hit this little arrow here to the left of the blend thumbnail, and I have still my two original groups in there, right? There's my light group on the front. This is my dark group on the back. I want to duplicate the light front group, so I'm going to select it, and I'm going to go edit copy. Now, in order to paste this, we want to lock the blend. So I just hit that little space in between the colored bar and the eyeball because it gives us that little padlock. Great. The reason we need to lock it is because if we were just to paste it, it would paste it right back into the blend and that would be, it's just kind of a pain in the neck. We want to be able to paste it outside of it. Edit, paste in front, and we're going to drop this shape right in front of our blend, right? So there it is, just showed up. Hey, so you feeling a little sore? You know, you got to give the hand a break while we're creating laboriously all of these individual hexagons. It's actually not that difficult, but you know what I'm saying. Hey, take a quick break. Go over and follow me on Instagram to see all kinds of other stuff that we're working on. I post stuff from current tutorials that I'm working on. And bonus, we're moving into a new studio soon where there's going to be all kinds of sweet behind the scenes photos coming out as well. You wouldn't want to miss it again at Tutvid. That's T-U-T-V-I-D is my Instagram. Let's get back to the show. Now what we want to do is we want to change the color of the stroke applied to this. So we got this yellow, light yellow stroke. Let's change it to like a hot pink up here using the color panel. It really can be any color. I just want to be able to see it. So there we go. We have our grid of hexagons on top of our blend of hexagons. And I want to go object and choose to expand this. And now Illustrator is going to say, hey, what would you like to expand? I don't want to touch the fills. I just want to mess with the stroke. There really isn't any fill in there technically. But let's just expand the stroke. And what that's going to do is it's going to make my pink stroke now a pink fill. 
right? That's pretty cool. Now, the trouble here is going to be, I don't know if you can see it. Maybe I got to make this like a blue or something like that, maybe a lighter blue. If you can see, we actually have all of these areas that are overlapping, right? So we're getting these loops in almost every little intersection of hexagons. Uh, that's going to cause us trouble here because if we just stroke this, we're going to get all these overlapping strokes, which is not really the effect we want. I'm going to undo that. Uh, so with this selected, what we want to do is get our path panel window, uh, paths, excuse me, pathfinder panel. There it is, pathfinder panel. And we want to go ahead and merge the shape. That's this icon right here on the bottom row. Let's just choose to merge these shapes together. And you can see when we did that, we get just this beautiful grid on top. And just quick side note, the reason that this is so important, uh, or I'm sorry, the reason that this comes out so cleanly shows the importance, I should say, of that snap to point we were doing before. Snap to point ensures that we have exactly perfect paths, which means when we get to this step, we're not going to have like really thin duplicated paths and all kinds of wayward uh, shapes all throughout our honeycomb. We get one perfect, beautiful group. You can see here, we just get this nice group and it's got our compound path and then all these other paths. These other paths are all sort of the holes that are being punched in the middle of this compound path. So what we can do with this uh, giant shape now, I can just hide my Pathfinder panel. Uh, we can go ahead and get rid of the fill. We can just give it a stroke. So I'm gonna select the fill. I'm gonna choose the little slash. It's gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna select my stroke down here in my tools panel. In fact, I can look up to my color panel. The stroke is in the foreground here. So the stroke is gonna be what we're working on. And I'm just gonna hit this color black. It's gonna apply a black stroke. If I deselect, we can see what's being done, right? You can see we're getting this nice stroke applied to our honeycomb grid. I'm gonna select that grid group again. And all I need to do, we could actually align the stroke here to the inside. So I can just choose to align it to the inside if we're going to be really picky with it. And I'll just set the transparency here to about 15%. So it's going to be a very light sort of outline on the face of our honeycomb grid. And you know what, now that I'm looking at it, I think I might actually go back to stroke and just align that the way it was. It looks a little bit more natural. Yeah, there we go. So to 15% black stroke applied to the face of the honeycomb grid is going to help to start, you know, just differentiate the face and let us know uh, where it is and, and keep it from getting kind of lost in that creamy golden yellow wall that's working its way backward. So now what we need to do is unlock the original blend. We're going to open it up and we're going to copy that, the, the rear hex grid, right? The darker one. So I'm going to select that and we'll go edit copy. And once more, I'm going to lock up the blend just like that. And now this time we're going to go edit paste in back and it's gonna paste this behind our honeycomb grid, right? And all we need to do here is flip the stroke in the fill. So right now the stroke is that kind of, you know, brownish, orangey color. We're gonna hit the little swappy swap arrow to flip that around. And now we get this, you know, sort of all the honeycomb grids look like they've been filled in. Great. I'm gonna select that and we can apply even a drop shadow to this. Let's go, whoop, I that's actually did that too quickly there. Let's go effect stylize drop shadow. There we go. And now the drop shadow, we can turn on preview. It's really all going to depend on the size of your honeycomb grids, the size of your stroke. Uh, but, you know, just mess with these settings until you, you're you just starting to see the, the shadow peering out underneath. I probably need to change my uh, Y offset to something like 15 to get it to appear. And let's just keep an eye on it. Yeah, see there, now it's starting to peek out of the bottom. Maybe give it like a five pixel blur just to boost things a little bit. And what I'll probably do after giving it that blur is just reduce the opacity quite a bit. Maybe knock it down to like 20. We don't want this to be a crazy heavy drop shadow. You're going to see how it'll kind of work its way into the effect. And honestly, we might end up just not even using it at all. In fact, I'm going to come over here to my layers panel and I'm going to start naming stuff because things will get confusing quickly here. I'm going to select the top stroke and name this face uh, stroke and the blend is the blend. We know what that is. And this I'm going to call it effect hyphen drop shadow just so we know that that's our sort of illustrator applied drop shadow. Now let's duplicate this drop shadow layer. So we have it selected already. We'll just simply go edit copy and I'm going to choose edit paste and back. And I'm going to name this shape by double clicking on the layer and we'll just choose to name it uh, drop shadow. So we'll name this one just straight drop shadow. And what I want to do is double click to open my appearance panel. If you don't see your appearance panel, it's here under window appearance. You can just open it right up. And we still have that drop shadow applied, right? Because we just duplicated the shape that had the drop shadow. I'm going to collapse my stroke here just so we can kind of look at what we're looking at here. So I've got this layer selected, the, the, the new drop shadow layer that we just duplicated. And it has a drop shadow as I can see here in the appearance panel. I just want to grab that and drag it to the garbage. That's going to get rid of that drop shadow. Now, if I shut off the effect drop shadow layer, we're going to have no drop shadow underneath our honeycomb grid at all. In fact, I think I'll keep it hidden because we're going to duplicate this drop shadow layer that we just created yet again. So edit, copy, and we can just use edit, paste, and back. And I'm going to make this shape match the color of my background. So in fact, 
with it selected, I'm gonna just drag it downward a little bit. I have the move tool selected, right? The move tool there. I'm gonna just click and drag this, hold down shift, and I'm just gonna pull it downward, I don't know, maybe to like right here, right? And then I'm gonna grab my eyedropper tool. I need to unlock my background layer for this. So unlock the background layer over here in the layers panel, right? Locked, unlocked, and then just click on the background. So it's gonna sample that background color and apply it to our selected shape. And right now we have that duplicated drop shadow selected. So we now have that filled with the yellow. Why is this important? Well, because we're gonna create another blend. We want to make uh, this new drop shadow blend from the dark color of the back of the honeycomb all the way to the color of the background, which will, in essence, make this fade out. So I'm gonna select both of these shapes and we'll just leave our blend options the way they were. Remember blend, blend options. We had like a 500 step blend. We're just gonna choose make and see what we get here. And that looks pretty good, but we can definitely see we have a problem here where the, the shadow is not lining up with the very edge of the honeycomb grid. And that's because we have the stroke of the honeycomb sort of straddling that path here in the stroke panel. We have our original, our original stroke on those hexagonal shapes. It's using this leftmost option, a line stroke to center is what it says, a line stroke to center. If we had done a line stroke to inside, it would be perfect, but I, I kind of prefer working with it a line stroke to center. So the workaround is actually pretty easy here in order to make this look smooth and right. We just simply add a stroke to our blend shapes. So I'm gonna open up this new blend we made down here. In fact, we'll name this blend Drop Shadow. It is the blend which will contain both of our drop shadow layers. We're going to go to the top drop shadow, select that, and with, well, we don't really need to add a stroke. We'll just go directly to the stroke layer, and I'm going to choose to add a 25-point stroke, which is exactly the size of the stroke we had added to our original hex shapes. 25 points. Give Illustrator a second. It's going to update the blend. It's going to look messed up. Don't worry. See how it looks all funky and, and weird? Don't worry. We need to add a stroke here to our bottom drop shadow. So what we can do here with the stroke selected, the problem is if we just add 25 points, points. Our selected color is that same dark brown that we have up top. So we need to make sure that it's the same yellow as the background. And that background yellow, the hex code for that was FFDF5A. So what I'm going to do, this is important here, the, the order of steps here is important to follow if you want to get this right. Make sure that stroke is the selected color that we're changing. Up here in the color panel, you can see it's in the foreground. So we're going to change the stroke. We don't want to add that last color. The last color is that, that dark brown that we're seeing down here. We have this hex input here. So what we're going to do is we're going to type FFDF5A into there. We're going to hit tab to commit that change, and you're going to see it's going to add just a one-point stroke. So it's very narrow, but it already fixes things. If we wanted to be very particular make sure that our, our shadow was exactly straight, come back to the stroke panel right here and just set the weight to 25 points, and it's going to straighten out the lines of our drop shadow. Watch right here. See? Boom. Straightened everything right out. Great. Now, part of the issue is the drop shadow runs off of our stage, our working area, so we can just quickly mask that in. Let's unlock our background layer and just click on the background layer. Go edit, copy, to copy it to our clipboard. Lock the background layer up once again. Select the drop shadow layer, and this is important. We want to select the drop shadow layer by clicking specifically on the little circle there. Double click to open your transparency panel right here. And we have the option to add a layer mask by simply double clicking that little thumbnail. We're gonna uncheck the clip option. So just click on that to uncheck it. And then what we're gonna do is go edit. You're gonna see the shadow will reappear here. There you go. And we're gonna go edit and paste in front. And we're choosing paste in front just because it essentially is a paste in place. And I'm just looking here. We actually want to leave clip turned on because we want it to be black everywhere except where our shape is. And we want to change the fill color of our shape. So once more, we can look to the color panel. Now here, our stroke is in the foreground. We don't want to change the stroke. So just click on fill. And we're now going to be working on the fill. And we're just going to set this to white. So you can drag all of your sliders all the way over to the right. Boom, that's filled with white. And we're getting the true actual color of our shadow as it should be. Now... Over here, you see the blue outline around the mask. That means the mask is active. Make sure we just click on our artwork to get back to our original layers panel so we can edit that stuff. So I kind of dig this even without the original drop shadow that we uh, applied. Remember this little effect drop shadow? Let's just turn that on and see what it looks like. But I have a feeling it's going to give us kind of a break in the honeycomb that I don't really like. Eh, I don't know. It's actually not too bad. Either way, it's not too bad. I'll just leave it the way it is. That's not too bad. Um, and, you know, at this point, you could go and you could illustrate some vector honey. Maybe that's dripping out of it. Add a bee or two. Uh, maybe that can be for a future tutorial. But for now, we have created this nice hexagonal honeycomb in Adobe Illustrator. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you've enjoyed the tutorial, again, make sure you like it. But more importantly, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you never miss any of these video tutorials in the future for creating a honeycomb in Adobe Illustrator using polygon tools. I almost said polygonal lasso tools. Polygon tools, snapping the point, uh, the blend tool, creating shadows, and all kinds of other stuff. Guys, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com.
I'll catch you in the next one.